In this last chapter, we're going to demonstrate the use of internal and external control devices to help make your interaction with Cubase as intuitive and creative as possible. We'll take a look at how to use automation, how to set up and use quick controls to keep your favorite functions at your fingertips, how to configure device panels to streamline VST instrument and effect editing, how to configure a generic remote control, and how to configure the Steinberg CC121 control surface. One of the greatest advantages to making music with a computer-based system is the ability to recall and automate almost anything. Anywhere you see the W and R icons, you can use automation. In simplest terms, if you click on the red W, so named for the fact that Cubase will then write automation data, the system will remember every move you make. To stop writing, either click the W again or stop playback. Engaging the write command automatically brings on the read function. Here's an example of using automation to add delay only to the last beat of a phrase. We'll do this by automating the bypass function on the effect. Cubase provides a centralized automation panel to help keep track of what you've automated. Each track has a hidden button here in the lower left-hand corner, and clicking this down arrow will expand the automation lanes for that track. If you engage the right automation option, you can manually edit automation events by adding points, moving points, or deleting points. Cubase has the ability to scale the automation data, which is known as applying trim, using a graphic interface much like we have to scale audio events. You have global control of the various automation functions here, and you can right click on a plugin and reveal automation, giving you an instant look at what's been automated with that device. Another way to increase your control and speed up your workflow is by using quick controls. Quick controls are similar to shortcut keys in that they're assignable controls. Each track has eight quick control slots. Now these quick controls can be assigned to almost any parameter within Cubase. For example, if you want to adjust the amount of reverb on a track, without constantly opening several editors, map it to a quick control like this. Now I can adjust the amount of reverb right from the inspector. Once you get them set up, quick controls let you reach inside Cubase right from the project window. There have been several refinements to quick controls. These include the ability of a quick control to learn what parameter it's assigned to rather than picking from a list. To do this, select a quick control, click learn, and then either move a hardware control or click and move a software control such as a plug-in parameter. Learn mode is automatically disabled after the new assignment is learned. An excellent application of this would be to use learn to assign several quick controls to a foot pedal on a hardware controller. Then map those quick control slots to the various effects in the VST amp rack. You can also right-click on devices inside Cubase and map them back to a quick control slot right from the editor, like this. There's a new button to quickly remove all quick control assignments to get you back to a blank slate in one step. And you can reload default settings from a plugin just as quickly with the arrow icon. Another tab you'll see in the inspector is the user panel tab. Here, you can configure a custom graphic interface to either streamline the use of plugins, almost like an elaborate quick control, or to program your external hardware devices from inside Cubase, including the ability to automate those parameters. Here's an example of a completed user panel for a popular hardware synthesizer. The process to create and assign all of the desired parameters is very clearly spelled out in the Cubase documentation. 
Once configured, user panels let you control even vintage MIDI synths and MIDI rack gear right from Cubase. Now you can also configure Cubase to respond to a variety of control devices. If you have a control device, or any controller that sends out MIDI data from faders and buttons, you can configure a generic remote. The process is pretty straightforward. Select the generic remote. Then select the parameter you wish to control. Engage the MIDI learn function, much like we did in quick controls. And then move the hardware control that you want to assign. Now you can use that hardware fader to control that Cubase parameter. Now at the other end of the spectrum is the purpose-built Steinberg CC121 controller. Cubase comes pre-configured to use this dedicated hardware device. Simply open the device setup dialog and you'll see CC121. The hardware buttons on the CC121 mirror those on a typical Cubase track as well as hardware knobs for EQ, full transport buttons, and a jog wheel. And there are also four soft controllers which you can assign. Finally, if you're using a Macintosh computer, then Cubase can be configured to respond to your Apple remote control. Here's a look at a wide variety of choices for your configurations. As long as you have a line of sight with your Mac, this is a great way to remotely control Cubase. But you may want to write down the configuration until you've used it enough to remember what all the button assignments are. We hope you've enjoyed and learned from these tutorials. We have only scratched the surface of what Cubase can do, so be sure to check out the Steinberg Knowledge Base, Cubase Online Community, Forums, and the Operation Manual to find out even more about Cubase. For everyone here at Steinberg, Thanks for choosing Cubase, and thanks for watching.